Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I'm your host, Sean Walchef. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. We are here at Eats by Sam, Woo! and it is still the coronavirus. We are at an open patio, open patio CD. Uh, last year we were here uh, doing Wonderfront, but this is Sam the Cooking Guy. This is Howard Solomon, both repeat guests on Digital Hospitality. Yeah. Sam, the first time he came on Behind the Smoke, which was our original podcast, Wait he sat above the butcher shop and told Derek and myself, I will not open up a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are, well, Sam's third, technically third restaurant. <laughs> but we're, we'll talk about the ghost kitchens. But Howard Solomon's the man behind the man, Sam the cooking guy. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Uh, pleasure. I just don't think man behind the man is enough. Not behind, okay. Man give, behind give me, everything. Man behind everything, <laughs> okay. Be. He's well, definitely behind me. Okay, let's talk about it. In the most positive way ever. He is my, my, my restaurant whisperer, my restaurant guru. I, I stayed out of the, the business because I eventually figured out what it was about the restaurant business that I didn't know. And that was everything. And, um, when I met these guys, the idea was you be you. And these guys that understand the restaurant business, especially Howard Solomon, better than pretty much anybody I know, will handle that part. Just because I cook on television and YouTube and have a great following doesn't mean I'd have restaurant success. This is the part that makes it all work. I mean, you need everything, but this is, for me, the whole back end of the business that makes our wheels turn and pushes us forward. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that. And part of why we're excited about the podcast is it gives people a seat at the table. So no matter where you are in the world, no matter where you're listening, to understand how the sausage is made, yeah. you know, how these restaurant brands are created, um, there are a lot of moving parts. And I wouldn't be able to run Cali Barbecue if it wasn't for Eric. You know, he's the yin to my yang. He's the yes. one that balances me out but to have you both on the podcast to kind of get an idea of the relationship because it's a big trust relationship. Where, where did it start? How did you, when did you first meet Howard? Uh, when I was, when I, I was originally um, approached by uh, the grain and grit guys when the food hall was a seed of an idea in Little Italy to be the, the marketing face of it. Mike DeNorch, the CEO said, look, you've got a great reputation in San Diego you're media savvy, you can talk, you can explain, uh, and you know food, but you're not in a category. You're not buttonholed into just doing Southwestern food or French food, you know? I'm pretty much food agnostic. And he said, you'd be a good advocate for this place. And while we were working out how that, those details would figure, I said one day when they were talking about what restaurants might go in, I go, I've got this idea for something that for lack of a better term, I call gringo tacos. <laughs> and they go, what is gringo that? Tacos and I explain, they're tacos without any, any Mexican influence. Not that I don't like that. In fact, I love Mexican tacos, but from where we are right now, we're about 15 minutes to the Mexican border. Just cross over, you got the be mes best Mexican food in the world. Yes. San Diego, really significant Mexican population, tons of restaurants, great food. The last thing they needed was a Jewish boy from Canada bringing more <laughs> Mexican-inspired tacos. So mine are things like Korean short rib and smoky pork with macaroni and cheese. Pastrami and from the Jewish boy from Canada. Pastrami there from the Jewish go. boy from Canada, that kind of stuff. And they went, wow, that sounds like something that could work. Yes. So now we're figuring that part out. And I said to them, you know I don't know how to run a restaurant. They go, no, we can do that. And then they introduced me to Howard. And Howard was meant to be my... I don't know how they described me to you. I mean, I don't know. I was meant to take all of Sam's stuff and translate it into bigger production, larger yeah. batches, how it all works from like a restaurant setting, pieces of equipment and things like that. But then that whole plan lasted, I don't know, maybe a day. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first meeting? Um, was In the, the first beginning. meeting at your house for the tasting or was it before that? No, before that, before that. I know we met for breakfast. Yes. And I talked we talked through the whole menu and I wrote everything down and I had to start translating recipes and but he's he's now my well one of my closest dearest friends yes we share the same philosophy about the business and now I've really starting to understand what the business means 
but he's my tasting partner. He's, he's really like my, if, I, if, we, if this was ballroom dancing, he'd be my ballroom dancing partner. I move, he moves. I make something, we try it together, and Howard will say, he has this move, he'll, he'll taste something. It just drives me freaking insane. <laughs> Go, here's a new taco, what do you think? And I have, to, I have to take my mask down for this. He'll take a bite of it and he'll go. <laughs> and he'll chew. He won't say an effing word. It's just the staring and the looking. And if he had clear plastic plates on his head, you could see the wheels turning inside. And I'm just like, okay, what's he gonna say? Is he gonna like it? I'm waiting for like the emperor to do the thumbs down and then the line <laughs> eats me. I can't tell and he goes, wow, this is delicious. Couldn't he have said that three minutes ago when you took your first bite? Or he'll go, you know what? I think it needs a little bit more of this or that. We talk about that, we do it. And the shit's better because of him. It's more fun because of him. And I don't want to sit here and kiss his ass, but. I think you're starting to make me cry a little this bit. Is, this <laughs> is one of those things that, that people need to understand. You're better when there's more of you and it's group think and it just wor it works. And the idea that we've expanded to graze after the tacos and now eats after grays uh, that comprises sandwiches and sandburgers. Again, it's this relationship that, yeah. that helps that part of it be so strong. I'm done talking. Howard, when did you first meet Sam? When, so you obviously, grow, being here in San Diego, you yeah. can't, I mean, the, the legend himself, yeah, so nice I mean, I first, Be nice on, now. I, first <laughs> on, I first met him on TV, right? Like everybody else, yes. you know, and, you know, it was the, you know, pulling open the cabinet and finding a can of spam and, you know, him, you know, looking for things to cook with and him just, you know, which was which was an amazing <laughs> format, you know, just to watch somebody in the kitchen. Yes. Um, just grab and cook and go, and go as as the show went on. Struggle. You Struggle. Know, but but, be, but he, he brings us all into the kitchen because it's not some celebrity chef. Right. It's somebody that's like, that's my friend. Yeah. Like he's struggling. He doesn't have the recipe that, you know, the ingredients that he needs to make the recipes, but he figures it out. Right. A normal cooking Which we all do all the time. Right. Like a normal cooking show, you say, you, get, you lose interest because you say, well, I don't have that ingredient. Yeah. So then you're just done watching because you don't have it. But when Sam cooked on TV, you're like, oh, I have that in my cupboard. Oh, I have that in my cupboard. There's like normal things yes. and once you cook like one or two of them you're saying to yourself like wow i can do that like it's i feel it's it's welcoming it was always meant to inspire people they were meant to watch and say that looks good but it also looks simple and he explains it in a way that i feel like i could do that yes and one of the compliments i get more often than anything else is i cook because i've watched you and i feel like i can um but it's the same thing with the restaurants i'm going to take it off of me and bring it back to the restaurants it's the same thing that we do. We want to be welcoming. We want people to feel like they're sort of, I, don't, I hate to say family because that feels it's just so trite and overused, mm -hmm. but we get emails all the time about our staff. And there's a lot of work that goes into choosing the staff and these guys do an amazing job. And I just got one I haven't yeah. shared with you yet. I agree people, with the staff part of it. Yeah. Couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't stop. They were being so effusive about how amazing the staff was. So that's it. I wanted you to watch the show and go, that's good. And I feel like I can do that. I want you to come to a restaurant and feel like this is good and we like this and people give a crap about us and it's that sort of thing. Yeah, but going back to my first, like first like actually met him, met him, like there's two profound instances. One, we had this initial cooking at his house where he wanted to show us, you know, the tacos. Yeah. And Mike DeNorcia, which he mentioned was there. A couple of people from Grain and Grit were there and I, were the, I was there and I was mostly concerned about the food and how he's putting Scaling. it together. Scaling, had menu, mind, menu yeah, like, engineering, plating, yeah, How to engineer packaging. this and how to, what, what products to procure and how we're gonna source that out and things like that. So as Sam's cooking, he's like doing salt. He's like going like, well, how much is that? <laughs> and he goes, it's like this much. <laughs> and so now I'm, I'm like focused on like guessing, was that like a, a half a teaspoon? Yes. You know, going into this little, you know, four ounce, sauce that he's making and I knowing that I have to make that in five gallons you know so all these things are going through my mind so I'm not now I'm like super focused on the how much he's putting in and I, and I don't want to ask him because at that point hardly knowing him I feared that he didn't know like 
what the answer was. It's going to be like a little bit of this and a little bit of that, which is great. Um, so I started focusing on all of these things, and I don't know what he thought of me that day, kind of like, why well, did I need to know that? I don't know. <laughs> I was really nervous about how the relationship was going at that point. And then we met for breakfast. Wait, hold on. I hate to do this. I'm going to get these guys. They oh, no. This help. is hospitality. This, yeah. this is, this is digital second, hospitality. Guys. So our, our job is hey, to Cam. take care of people. Can you, can, there's people there that need help. And teach you how to take care of people. This is live, yeah, and people are coming to order. And our toast rep, Will, is over there teaching them how to use the kiosk. Hi, everybody. Hello. And this we, is a brand have, new restaurant. Help coming. Help is coming. Help is coming. Help is on the way. Look at how, look at, that's look at what that. you do. Hospitality. That's you, what hospitality look, is. You understand this that's more, what than, the, like, more than most people in the business, I think. Thank you. You, you truly get, I mean, it's on your hat. Nobody knows what digital hospitality means. That's our job. We, is all, to, understand that's that's that, we all understand the hospitality part, yes. but that's important. Yeah. They're standing there looking like they needed somebody. And this concept here, I don't know if you mentioned it when I was away. It's kiosk based. Yes. So you do it yourself. It's touchless. It's, contactless, it's human-less, but sometimes people need a little push to help. Yes. Well, basically, you, if you know how to swipe, you can. Yeah. Well, but it was clear. I did have somebody ask me, like, I go, just swipe left or right. I go, swipe, what does that mean? He's like looking for something to yes. like, wipe. So well, I, I mean, I think part of what we do on the show every week is digital hospitality. What Sam is talking about is teaching people that technology is part of our lives, yep. whether we want to admit it or not. It ain't and going every anywhere. single day, especially now, we have QR codes, which will bring up menus. We have toast. You know, Will is here as a toast rep. You brought toast to Cali, Cali Barbecue. Toast is integrated at Gray's, at Not Not Taco, yep. at a lot of the brands that you work with. We, we create toast content because we think it's so important for restaurant owners to understand the technology side. Yep. And the technology side, if you don't have a technology partner, you can't grow your brand. Why did you pick toast? And where, what, tell me specifically about what you guys are doing here. Well, you know, with I, think, I think it's, I want to tie in that hospitality piece. Please. You know, real quick because, you know, in the, in the olden days, which is actually last March prior to COVID. Yes. Right? You used to get a I'm POS sure. system and you used to figure it all out from the users, from the server standpoint. Like, what was easiest for the server? What language did they need? Because the server was the one punching the, the buttons and entering the order and things like that. So everything was like from the business side. Correct. Because the customer never saw that piece of it. Correct. I think the biggest problem that other restaurants may have is that they don't understand the guest facing piece of it. Yes. That it's no longer the server Correct. doing it. So. When it's you, actually empowering when the guest has the opportunity yeah. to order what they want to order yeah. because maybe the server or the menu didn't do a good job of describing it. Right. And so now, like, there's all these, I'm going to use a, a one that's pretty simple, like, you know, on, on the, the pre-COVID POS, it used to say BTL for bottle. Yes. Or DRFT for draft. Yes. And that's how the server rang it in. They looked for those shortened words or whatever it was, and they would punch it in. Well, you can't use that language, correct? You know, for these guest-facing things, whether it's whether it's toast tab on your phone or the kiosk, you have to be really good at explaining the ingredients, and you have to be really good at the picture. Yes. You know, so it's readable, and you can see like all the ingredients layered in it, and you have to do all these things that are like guest-facing for it to like really work, and for it to really equivalent into sales because once you hit that digital space it's there is a piece about guest or customer um, what's it called the cost of customer acquisition yes there is a piece of that but the success really lies in the repeat customers correct thank who, you who actually that absolutely who actually enjoyed that having experience. fun yeah. ordering their food yeah. and it came in a time where they didn't have to like go look for something to do while they're waiting for their food. Yes. You know, and it actually can arrive to their home, you know, on a delivery platform or that you deliver it yourself, or they can just take a 10 minute walk and go get it, you know, because everybody understands that system and that Correct. process. So it's this it's the it's the guest facing part of it that's important. And it's also the efficiency of the process. Th think about this. When COVID first hit, one of our biggest challenges was trying to make a server that was sweet and kind and really cared 
like that, but now with a mask on their face. Yes. You can't see a smile. Hard to get that. Yep. So we had to work on the staff. I mean, everybody's had to learn yeah. this. How you can still have your personality come through, even though most of your face you can't see. So that was one challenge. But now this part, yes. now that kiosk is really standing in as an actual human. Yes. Yep. And if that's jacked up a little bit, correct, then you're, you're, you're not yeah. going to have any business. People will only try so many times yes. before they say, I'm done. I don't want to be part of this. Yeah. Anymore. Correct. And I think that's, that's a great point, and that's something that we talk about with digital hospitality is the thing that was game changing for us is there's a sign when you go into every restaurant and it says, please seat yourself yeah. or please wait to be seated. It's a standard restaurant sign you can buy anywhere. Howard's shaking his head. He knows yeah. all about it. It's, the reason there's that sign is it's a hospitality hack. Yep. It's a way to reduce labor costs so yep. you do not have to pay a host or hostess to be at the front of the restaurant to welcome somebody. Yep. Very early on, Eric and myself, we decided we're not going to we're not going to have that sign. Yep. We're going to always pay. We're going to invest in hospitality to always have somebody in the front of the restaurant. It changed everything for us. We went from, you know, a three-star restaurant to a four and a half, five-star restaurant because we started caring about that consumer experience. Yep. That has to happen digitally. Yep. So even when you integrate something as forward-thinking as toast and a tablet, you have to be willing like Sam did to get up and go and get a human yep. to come and teach somebody because you teach that, someone. That might be too loud. That's too loud? Helicopters? We're all good. What? You don't like the sound of freedom? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. We're all good. We like it. We we want all we it's it's ultimately that's just how that's I mean, whether it's helicopters, whether it's boats, what? whether it's customers coming to pay at a tablet. I mean <laughs> but that's part of the piece, right, Howard? I mean yeah. Like that's the thing. It's like if you don't care enough about your own restaurant where we're filming a show and there's people here trying to buy your food, then what are we doing? How crazy yeah. would that what be? What are we doing? Look at them and ignore? No, I yeah. could never do that. You know, we all say like it's tough to catch up with technology. We were talking about it earlier, like yes. we're in the technology world whether we like it or not. Well, the great thing about the system and about Toast themselves is that they are constantly evolving. Yes. You know, so the hat, we just started to, we launched this a couple weeks ago. We're just, you know, really making it a robust system, but they have this guest feedback. Yes. And you're actually able to get a positive feedback. Yep. Positive and, or negative feedback. Yeah. And we all know the power of Yelp, right? Yes. And, and at the same time, we also know that it's way easier to get a one or two or three star Yelp because yes. we didn't meet expectations because they're expecting a different kind of barbecue. Correct. Or they're... You're, you're, you're destroying the Mexican culture because you're not putting <laughs> carne asada on a taco. True, true statement, a Yelp review that said, we were making a mockery of the Mexican people by not serving Mexican tacos. You were actually honoring them. <laughs> yes. yes. That, was the, whole point. that was the whole point of the I concept. I said, your right. food is so good, yeah, I'm please. not even going to try it. Please. Yeah, I'm going to let other people do it. So, and then it's, it's a difficult challenge to get a positive review. Yes. It's way harder to get a positive review. Yes. Because people just don't take the time to say, nice job anymore. Who does that? But it, with Toast, this feedback, you get like a simple thumbs up or thumbs down, positive or negative. Yes. You know, and we had over, I don't know, a, a hundred or so odd, you know, feedbacks in a week, you know, of which 96 or 7 percent of them were positives which is great, you know, makes you feel good. But the negative ones, you're able to respond like right there on Toast. Yes. And with their um, virtual gift card, you're able to send them, you know, an apology Correct. with a gift card right from the Toast handheld. Yep. And there is no, what's your email address? I like to take care of, there is no cumbersome process. It just yes. happens like that. Virtually. Virtually. Digitally. And yep. it's amazing, you know, how quickly Toast, you know, is creating the technology speed for you to do like a whole bunch of stuff, either from your phone, because it's all in the cloud, or just from a handheld. You know, I mean, isn't that what hospitality is? Yeah, it's, it's communication. It's a whole like, different kind of hospitality. If you're not communicating, whether it's digitally yes. or in person, like yes. you don't know how to feel. Like it's all about feeling, right? This yep. this experience here for us, Eats by Sam, would be a very different experience had it not been for the toast. Yes. The toast. It really would have. I'm not sure how it would have pulled off. Yes, there's other things I guess that are out there, but this has really made it very sort of user friendly for us. We can be uh, quippy, we can be funny with what we put in this Correct. thing. Correct. And make it feel more like us 
if it was us actually doing it. Doing yes. It. And the, the crazy thing is, you know, uh, we have almost two and a half million subscribers on YouTube. Which is a lot. Which is, it's a good number. Look, I'm very happy for the number. But it didn't happen overnight. Yes. It's been a few years of building the audience. A few years. It's big, been a long it's been, time. Yes. The, You've been working on brand for a very long time. That, that's absolutely so let's, true. So let's, 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 let me just tie let's it be honest. Into, let me tie, okay, so it's a bit. Let me just tie it into a toast. This technology will change how restaurants work. Yep. There's no question about that. But the time to be thinking about this, if you're a restaurateur, and by the way, I'm not being paid to say this. Correct. Am I? Not yet. Damn it. <laughs> the time we'll to we'll be, run it by toast the, next. The time to be thinking about this is now. People look at me and they go, well, he's got two and a half million subscribers on YouTube. It probably is, you know, ha no, it didn't happen. If you don't get in the game yes. and at least start thinking about this, and this is your mission, it seems, what you preach, this is so important. Technology is yes. so important. You have to start thinking about it now. So don't look at what's going on in our world right now and go, well, the virus will probably be gone next year. We're all going to get the vaccine. Why do I need to think about this? Well, the point is, if you don't start thinking about it now, when you do need it, if you need it, or you have another concept in your head, you're going to be behind the eight ball. Somebody will go past you. Yeah. Well, it's the bottom line is no matter where you go, you can be at your house, you can be out at the airport, you can be out at the shopping mall. People are looking at their phone. If you own a business and your yeah. business isn't on those platforms, on all those logos, on all those apps, then what are you doing? Yeah. Eventually, eventually, and I don't care what business or what industry you're in, you're going to lose out to somebody that goes, hey, yes. I'm an attorney. I need to have a sexy website. Yes. Yep. I yes. need to start yes. blogging. I need to start a podcast. I need to start creating content so people know this is how I help people. Yep. But just, to, just for proof in the pudding, well, one thing real quick, you did pay toast. <laughs> because you, you gave them a free signature. On oh, you did. On, you did. No, you, it's not on the cookbook. I want to be paid, not <laughs> them getting paid. <laughs> We'll work on that. We're, that, that. That's part of our mission, is but integration. At the first of the year, we launched delivery with the third-party platforms at uh, Not Not Tacos, and we opened up Gray's in February. We, we did the same thing. And you didn't have third-party delivery we did uh, before. before. So what, you had Grubhub, Uber Eats, yep. DoorDash, Postmates. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we threw up our menu you know, on these platforms, the best that we knew. Yes. Right? And we hardly did any deliveries at all. I mean, maybe we were lucky if we did five deliveries yeah, at Not Not Taco. Yep. And maybe we were lucky if we did like one charcuterie board at Gray's, if we were lucky. But we knew it was going to be like a building process, right? And then um, we opened up Gray's with toast. Yes. And then before, before we opened up Not Not Tacos or reopened, we installed toast there, right? And it was this guest-facing piece of it that I was talking about earlier that really taught us how to speak to the guest. Yes. And then we took what we learned from setting up Toast on how to speak to the guests with Toast Tab and what it looked like on your phone and got feedback from people. We realized what a horrible job we did right. prior to COVID of just launching this stuff just to launch it. Yes. Right? And so... Horrible job on which, which aspect? On the third party platform. Yeah, I know, but which aspect of it? Was it the food packaging or was it the... The pictures, the, photos, the language, the, the, the quickness that Sam was talking about, being ourselves well, on this, the like, this is a perfect example of, like, this is Sam's voice. Yep. When I touch this book, I feel like Sam is reading me the recipes. He's making jokes in the book as if the same way that I'm watching his content. But if you can't speak that way in your technology, in your restaurant, of who you are as a brand, right. yep. you're going to lose. 100%. Well, when I read Sam's recipe from the book, just to let you know, I don't hear jokes. I hear him swearing. <laughs> <laughs> the jokes got edited out. <laughs> but when we did this toast thing and we learned, you know, we figured out how to do it. You know, then it changed the entire third-party platform piece of it. Yes. So but now, between Eats by Sam, Gray's, Not Not Tacos, we're doing 300 deliveries a week. Unbelievable. Amongst all those brands, we're doing over a hundred orders a week just on the Toast tab. Unbelievable. Of just and nobody's in the restaurants. And very few staff. Very few. You know, no, like, but I mean, no, but no, no customers. customers. Yeah. No. Correct. Like, this is all no. digital sales. Yeah. 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 Like here, there's... That's, you're an e-commerce company. Yeah. Yes. Here, there's three people on staff right now for a lunch. Yes. And they're just, you know, they're packaging things for to-go's or doing pickups and deliveries or helping people in the kiosk. But that's kind of all it needs. It needs this minimal staff because you have this 
really good guest facing, understanding the guest understands it kind of platform. And then we applied what we learned from Toast Tab on our phone yes. to what we were doing on the third parties and it, it just skyrocketed from there. But here's an important part though that somebody listening should really think about. We're now really starting to feel like we've got Toast down, right? We're comfortable with it. It's working really well for us. And this is after how many months? So, I mean, I, we worked on it like full time, like sometimes like eight hours a day trying to figure it out. Right, mm -hmm. so, so for somebody that's saying, oh, I like the idea of it, don't expect that you will get it and it will integrate seamlessly no. into your business yeah. and you're gonna be a wizard with it tomorrow. That's not gonna yeah. happen. You've gotta learn, your staff has gotta learn, and yeah. then you have to teach your customers. Yep. And I think a huge part too is there's never been a time where technology company as big as Toast, a tech company as big as Yelp, that they need us just as much as we need them, where they actually need the responsiveness of operators, owner operators, yeah. people that are using it, servers, people at the kiosks, to give that feedback loop. Yep. Because that feedback loop could be the key to them telling an engineer, hey, you know, Eats by Sam, they have, you know, they just installed this new kiosk. Yep. What if we added this button at the front that actually tells the customer, hey, this is what we needed to know, yep. so Sam doesn't have to get up. Now they go, oh, we're going to roll that out. They roll it out across all platforms. Now you've literally saved how much money in labor costs oh, yeah. and uncomfortable experience and lost revenue. A new item. Yeah. But we think up something, we snap a picture of it, we write a fun description. Yes. Yeah. Boom, it's there. Here's something really funny that we're, we're going to, Sam and I are going to grow this out. You know, we're, we're going to talk today at some point, but, you know, if we you have can this, catch like, up to you. We have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do. Yes. But we had this secret menu that we've had at Not Not Tacos, you know, and we we're like, people know about it now. Yes. But we wanted to do a secret menu here. Because it's a secret menu, it's but it's not very but secret. There's no interaction now. Correct. Like, there's no server to sell the secret menu. Yes. So we just put a tab on the kiosk that says secret menu. I just saw the secret <laughs> menu. But imagine, imagine all the people that have heard about In N Out and their secret menu, yeah. but they can't order that secret menu unless they know the secret right. language. Right. But how but, funny is but that? But then when there's a technology piece that says, here's the secret menu that you've heard about, now you can actually order animal style right. fries. Right. Now it's an aha moment. Yeah. You're like, now how many more people are going to order that animal style fries? Yeah. So the What's menu? on your secret menu? I can't tell you. <laughs> I've got to go to the toast tab to figure it these out. These amazing, like here, these amazing chili cheese fries. Yes, we got you know, great chili amazing. cheese And then we have drive-through tots at um, Not Not Tacos. Yeah. So I want to talk about ghost kitchens, virtual kitchens. Boo. Boo. Friendly ghosts, as we like to call them. What, uh, what's the plan for concept rollout and how restaurant own owners can be a little bit more versatile in their existing spaces? You know, well, at least for us, we're going to dip our toes in the water and, and we're going to actually uh, put a uh, not not tacos and a sandburgers in a breakfast concept in Orange County. Awesome. You know, where it works for them, right? Yes. Uh, because there is no business at night. They close at, you know, two or three in the afternoon. And it's a way for them just to just to give staff more hours. Um, r two really simple concepts are both really, you know, small menus. Yep. Let's uh, us get in front of a different audience. Yes right away yep like quickly without building an entire correct million dollar restaurant yep and you know too like eventually this will become what we've always wanted it to be um this space that we're in now so this this virtual kiosk thing is is temporary until things that happen but you know the goal is is to you know possibly use the kiosk and other applications that's that's our goal and to take a concept like this and still keep not not tacos, which we're going to, we plan on putting into ease yep. and keep Sandburgers and still run the ghost kitchen while this transforms into something more full service. Yeah. And to keep on doing that and, and look for other brick and mortar places where we can add a concept, add a ghost. Well, I mean, look how many concepts you have. Yeah, no. <laughs> this is a concept machine over here. Yeah. This guy's a concept we're, we're, machine. We're working on it. He yeah. told me the other day, he was, the goal is 11, so I've only got eight. Why 11? Eight. What's, what's, is that a magic I number? I think he was joking. Yeah. Oh. I hope he was joking. <laughs> so next time we'll have you on, you'll have 13? <laughs> it's, better be careful what he says. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So Thanksgiving's coming up. Christmas is coming up. Tell me, I, I obviously love every single cookbook you've put out, but Thank this you. one specifically, the photos are phenomenal. Let me just, and the concept. Just, I mean, 
talk about getting something that you wanted because I know you fought for what you oh yeah why this came to be yeah so I was approached by a, a publisher yep he knew I had three previous books and he said would you be interested in a book we're having a conversation I go yes he goes any ideas what that concept might be I go I got it right here in my computer I have the whole almost the whole book sort of outlined at least he goes what is it and I go what was my name then oh my working title then was make this then that it's a little bit of a steal from a uh, uh, men's uh, uh, cookbook series not cookbook but health eating eating healthy series called eat this not that got it um, so make this then that and the idea was let's give them master recipes how to roast a perfect chicken how to make a brisket uh, even silly things like how to hard boil eggs properly so you don't get that gray ring around the yolk how to make uh, perfect steamed rice but then four five or six recipes that follow that main recipe mm -hmm. different ways that you can make something so you don't have to eat that chicken like a piece of chicken on your plate for day two or day three turn it into a Chinese wonton chicken soup yep turn it into a a braided buffalo chicken pizza yes great looking thing that's the idea and so they were down with that they didn't like the name and I cried for the longest time fighting for that name and then one day I don't know who said it or I just came to me I went make this not that has nothing to do with food yeah could be anything correct it could make this wooden table <laughs> and then turn it into a mat matches right <laughs> so that we we got to this intentional I think my literary agent threw the word intentional out one day and that just hit everybody at the same time intentionals a yeah. great word so intentionality is a good thing in life. exactly right yes so a I'm trying to give the recipes and then tell people what to do with that stuff but also let's change how we look at our food I used to be a terrible food waster. I really did. Chicken, great. Chicken tomorrow lunch, great. But now I'm, it's looking dry. I'm a little tired of it. Just get rid of it. We shouldn't be throwing out food. We know that instinctively. Yes. You feel bad about it, but I would do it. But so if they get the book and they get ideas from here, or if it changes how they look at food in their refrigerator, that's great. I tell people once a, once a week, at least, Pick a day, call it a Sunday. What you make for dinner that night or lunch that day, you don't open any new packages. Nothing comes out of your freezer, none of that. Use what you've got. You can always take whatever you've got and turn it into a, a pizza. You can make a frittata, you make an omelet, you make all kinds of things. A stir fry. I'll take leftover hot dogs and uh, roasted red peppers and, uh, you know, random vegetables whatever and make just the best stir fry ever yes i had a recipe in one of my other cookbooks called fridge fried rice because the idea was to open the door of the fridge whatever's in there ends up in your stir fry and your rice so it's that kind of thing i like it i think it's my most useful book yet yeah i think the years and years that sam has done this yes like there's everything at some point or time in the book and it's all him. I mean, he didn't even hire like a hand model. Yes. You know? <laughs> it's all him. It is. Actually, I'm very proud to say all the food styling. So Lucas Barbieri did the pictures. He gave me the name of a food stylist to talk to before because yes. we had very few days to do this. And I thought, wow, that'd be great. A food stylist, I could say, here's a, here's a pizza. Make it look pretty. Yes. And I'll start working on this so we can just go. We shot the whole book in five days. And I talked to this woman. And I hung up the phone, I felt like she's not done anything interesting in 25 years. <laughs> and here's what I was gonna get. I was gonna get that classic shot from the top, uh, yep. a placemat with a matching napkin and a cute little holder, yep. you know, the forks, and then a, you see some flowers here and a cup of coffee and stuff. And so everything in here, all the, all the food styling is me. It's amazing. I did everything. Lucas made my pictures amazing. It, well, look, it looks like your YouTube channel. But it does. It's branded. But it's also, there's it's no, there's no consistent. napkins, Correct. there's no placemats. There's just my nonsense in here, but beautiful, beautiful pictures. It was really fun to do. So Thanksgiving at Sam, the cooking guy's house. Yeah. What are you going to do with your leftover recipes? Uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, 
I mean, come on now. Look how beautiful those hands look are. Look at those hands. <laughs> are, you, are, are, you hands. Selling, are you selling the hands <laughs> or the Kahlua, Kahlua I Park hope, sliders? I hope that the hands <laughs> don't detract from the recipe. Uh, no, look. Um, so uh, my, a friend of mine calls uh, Thanksgiving the Super Bowl of leftovers. Yes. And she's 100% right. Yes. I dig the dinner itself. My favorite food holiday, though this year will be much smaller than... I'm, I'm sad I can't cook for 20 or 25. Just very immediate family, but that's okay. But it's the next day. There's a Thanksgiving uh, Benedict in here. Yes. That we repurpose the stuffing to be like a crispy little cake at the bottom mm. with the egg and turkey instead of ham and the gravy instead of hollandaise. We love that. Uh, we make stuffing omelets the next day because they've been a family classic forever. And then everything else. There are going to be tacos coming out of this. There will absolutely be... A turkey and dumplings, one of my favorite things. Yes. Chicken and dumplings, but you got a, just a big ass turkey. People freak out about a big ass chicken. I mean, people freak out about cooking a turkey. They go, can you cook a chicken? They go, yeah, that's manageable. I go, it's just a big effing chicken. It's the same thing. It's just going to take longer. Yes. But I'll tell you this. When is this coming out? Before this is going to come out whenever you want, Sam. <laughs> we'll roll this out. The special <laughs> Sam the Cooking All Guy episode. All I was going to say is, if turkey, we'll come out whenever if you, whenever hasn't you lay happened it down. yet, or if it has, if you go to make a turkey, you go to make a chicken. Brine the poultry first, ladies and gentlemen. You must do that. You must do that. You must brine. You must. So, you guys have been both incredible supporters. Howard's now on part of the Cali barbecue team, which I've stolen some of his time away from you. Um, we're doing some incredible work. I'd, I'd love to get your idea of, when I say digital hospitality, what do you think of? Well, I know I give you crap about that. <laughs> I know you I do, made, that's why I'm putting you on the, I'm, but you've, you've made our podcast better. You've made, made our podcast better. You've made, made our I media made, company better. <laughs> you are a mentor to me and I appreciate that. I and made, I take all the criticism and jokes seriously. So please. Uh, what do I think when I think of digital yes, hospitality? Yes, when you think of digital hospitality, what do you think? It's been in my head long enough now that I'm thinking this is what hospitality will be, restaurants specifically, in the future. How we can use it to make our lives better. But if we're not making our customers' lives on the other side yep. of this better, then what's the point? Correct. Because that's all we've got. Yes. We can, we can do amazing things here. But if we're not taking care of our customers, there's absolutely no point. Howard knows, the staff knows. When a fan comes and they want to say hello, if I'm anywhere in the vicinity, they'll text me and say, there's somebody here. Yes. Can you come say hello? I always go because I appreciate it's 100% about them. Yes. My stuff doesn't matter. If they're not coming to the restaurants, if they're not buying a book, if they're not watching the YouTube channel, What's the point? I owe it to them, we owe it to them, and this digital hospitality thing, as much as yes, it does make our lives easier and better, if it doesn't help them, then, then why not? And I feel like there's like a lot of people out there that just feel like this is just a temporary thing. Yes. We're gonna go back to my old restaurant and servers will be out there performing hospitality and all that kind of stuff, and that's okay. Like I'm not, I don't think any of us are here to like to change the way people are thinking, but at the minimum, it is 100% an additional revenue stream for any restaurant out there. Even if you don't believe it's the new thing, it is unquestionably an additional revenue stream and you have no idea the potential of it until you learn more about it and give it a whirl. Because it, it can add additional revenue without any additional labor if you do it the right way. What he said, absolutely. And who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want that? It's know. much more profitable look at, than look it's at, ever So been. this, imagine, remember food trucks, right? Yes. It was a great way for a, a chef with a concept to not have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for a brick and mortar. But then, I don't know what happened. There was a lot of them, now there's not a lot of them. Can't tell you the last time I saw a food truck. Nope. Whether the concept idea was just not that great, whether people got tired of it, I don't think so. But there can't be a better way than this. Well, I think I for think expanding Howard, your business. Howard he addressed said, what why it, it works. It only works. The hospitality only works when it's repeat business. Yep. So it, you're only in a transactional business and a vending business 
when you have that kind of relationship as a food truck. It's not to knock food trucks, it's just you're not in a fixed location. Right. What's happening now is you need a fixed distribution location yeah. where people can come to expect, I would love to have different types of tacos once a week. I can order from Not Not Tacos. Yeah. I can order that again because I had such a great experience. It was easy to pay, it was easy to order. My wife liked the food, my kids ate the food. Now, it's a part of our routine. Yep. Becoming a part of a routine is the only way that you can yep. succeed in this business. Yep. You're not in your head like that's correct. Do you need some help? Sorry. No, please. Stands on the way out there. Uh, you guys, you've come twice. I mean, yeah, so this, I think Sam's coming up there. Oh, no, she's not. We can get you one. Oh, you can get anything. We'll get him. We'll get him some ice. You can make anything. Um, well, I appreciate you guys both. You know how much I adore you both. I appreciate we you, you giving uh, the audience a seat at the table. Uh, you were on uh, Barbecue Central show with the origin story of Sam the Cooking Guy. You make a monthly appearance with Greg Rempe, who's a dear friend of both of us. Yeah. Uh, but you were talking about a seat at the table. And I think, you know, in the coronavirus world, it's people that love hospitality, love hosting, love doing what we do. A seat at the table is all really what we all want. Yes. And you talked about a round table. Yes. Why, why is a round table so important to Because it's who inclusive, you, are? you know? I mean, look at, uh, you go, you see dinner parties in restaurants. It's a long table and there's eight people down each side and one at the end. So you talk to this person, this person, and that person, that's it. But the round table forces that group interaction. It's no uh, coincidence that Chinese food restaurants have those big giant round tables with the food in the middle. So yes, it's so everybody can share that food and s turn the lazy Susan. Yeah. But it's also because it's so comfortably communal. Yes. I would rather sit and be able to look at everybody than just eat. Well, then you're in on everybody's jokes. That's you don't feel like is. you're part of, that somebody's joking about you. You're, yeah. everyone's part of the joke. And the best part is there's no head of the table. Correct. No. no. Correct. Everyone has a voice, yeah. everyone has a story, it's, and everyone can share. It's comfortably inclusive. It's really good. It's really good. Well, we are uh, grateful for everybody who listens to the podcast. We'll put in the show notes all of Sam's links, all of Solomon Leader's links. Um, thank you, guys. Be sure to pick up this new book for the holidays. Uh, I believe it's on every single app that sells books. <laughs> yeah, There's one big much. app that sells books. I think it's called Amazon. Yes, um, they do sell books. But yeah, eat, uh, Seaport Village. This is the spot, right? Yeah. This is the new spot. And up also, and running. too, on Sunday at noon. Oh, yeah. Book signing? Sure. But this might not be out by then. We'll put it out. Oh, okay. We'll, it's all about repurposing content. The same way you repurpose a recipe, <laughs> you repurpose content. Whether you saw it before, whether you saw it live, yeah. whenever you shared it, Sam will be signing books. Book signing, noon, yes. raised by Sam, Little Italy Food Hall. And if you ask him to cuss and you're signing, he might do it, yeah. <laughs> depending on how much he likes you. I'll do it whether you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys, we'll catch you next week.